The world around us is changing, in small ways and in bigger ways. And nowhere is that more apparent than in our oceans. They are being changed by forces within our control and those out of it. If our reefs die, the marine life dies, and total economies collapse. Apocalyptic is the word that comes to mind because so much relies on our water. But sometimes what may seem like a lost cause is actually one waiting for the right combination of teamwork, relentlessness, serendipity, and passion. What we're doing is so impactful. And in years to come, I mean, we're, we're affecting history, right? And it's just to be a part of it is so powerful for me to know, see, I can't do this. <laughs> Our generation are the ones really that impacted the reef dramatically. And it's our generation that need to do something about it mm -hmm. for the next generation. I've been diving long enough that I saw firsthand the thickets of coral, the life that lived inside of the coral. I want my grandkids to be able to see that. Since the 1970s, the coral reefs of the Florida Keys and the Caribbean have undergone a terrifying decline, with some regions losing 98% of their growth. Especially affected are the staghorn or Acropora cervicornis and the Elkhorn Acropora palmata. There isn't just one cause. White band disease, disastrous weather, coral bleaching, sea urchin die-off, white pox disease, degraded water quality. And there isn't just one effect. Because staghorn and elkhorn are unusually adept at growing and nourishing the surrounding fish and invertebrates, their loss means chaos for the entire ecosystem, which consists of almost 1,400 species of marine plants and animals. The degradation of the coral reef, and you see the damage that's been caused by big storms and by, you know, us, unfortunately, and it's easy to become passionate about it and want to help. Today, we're going to discover two small, family-centered organizations that are doing everything they can to reverse the reef's degradation and show that making a difference isn't always about the size of your wallet. A lot of people don't know about us because we're not making commercials. We're not, um, we're not great marketers because we're out in the field. We're planting coral. That's right. Yeah. We're diving. You might get a. You might get the answer machine at the <laughs> at the education <laughs> it center because. Yeah. It's the story of a Florida nonprofit, Coral Restoration Foundation, and a Florida diving equipment business, Dive Right. Dive Right is a company that makes equipment for serious divers. It's been our tagline since we started in 1984. Of course, I didn't start it. My dad did. I wasn't even around then but we make equipment for real divers. From the commercial diver working out there, hard at work, to the recreational diver, tech diver, cave diver. So we make equipment for everybody. Both organizations successful, both with humble beginnings, united by a love of the ocean and the unwillingness to just sit back and watch as it's being destroyed. I started diving on here in 1970 and started collecting tropical fish then. You know, so I, I, I saw it when it was really great. You know, there was a lot of coral, it was really nice. Then a year I was full-time, you know, tropical fish collector and that made, I was, I was in the water three to five days a week, you know, three or four dives a day up and down the Keys. And, and I saw, you know, a great thing, but then I saw it die. The Coral Restoration Foundation um, was founded uh, in the year 2000. Um, it started with a 4-H project between Ken Niedermeyer and his daughter who found coral growing naturally on a live rock farm that he used in his previous business. We had this live rock farm where we are growing rocks, you know, everybody thinks, you know, <laughs> we're a rock farmer, you know. I plant the rocks and they grow and I, I, I harvest them and sell them. And uh, one of the provisions in that live rock aquaculture program is that any corals that settle on the rock, because corals have a planktonic stage and so when the little coral larvae is ready to settle, it'll settle on, you know, it, it has its preferences, yeah. but it'll settle on just about anything. One year, 
we had staghorn coral settle on the rock, oh. which is a real fast growing branching coral. Yeah. And I knew that the, the aquarium trade would, you know, they were growing it in the aquarium trade. And, and I started thinking, you know, what if we could grow this on the, on, you know, somehow underwater and sell it to the aquarium yeah. trade. That was my initial uh, thought. So his initial reaction was, she gets a car, I get to put her through college, we're gonna be rich. And then he decided that that isn't what they were gonna do. He was, going, like Pam said, he was going to make a difference. As soon as I start growing it and fooling with it, I, I just like, ah, oh, this stuff's cool. <laughs> and I said, what if we could put it on the reef and bring those reefs back? Yeah. And that's, yeah, I had never sold the first coral. The I, Coral I, Restoration I, Foundation was founded in 2000 with one very specific and very unique mission to form offshore nurseries and restoration programs for threatened coral species. The Coral Restoration Foundation is an organization that um, develops and implements strategies for growing and restoring uh, Elkhorn and Staghorn coral. Through state-of-the-art propagation techniques, tens of thousands of corals are grown anew. They're then outplanted on local reefs, promoting genetic diversity for future generations. And so the overall goal is to plant enough corals out on our reefs so that they will spawn naturally and begin to repopulate naturally. Right. We're working to put ourselves out of business. Nice. Good idea. <laughs> well, the beauty of this out here is we're growing them out in the ocean, right near the reef, in the environment that they came from and where they're going. And so there's no question about the health and condition of right. the coral. Yeah. You know, all those obstacles were taken away, yeah. which really allowed us to, to move into a into something that hadn't been done. Yeah. Nobody had really thought about doing it on that. You know, I mean, people had kind of dabbled with it, but to do it on a scale that made a difference, nobody had done it. And uh, I always did it from the very beginning. I was going to do it to make a difference. I was not just to do it to show it could be done. I was yeah. going to do it and really do it. <laughs> Dive Right was established in 1984 by Lamar Hires and Mark Leonard. When I learned to dive, and then wasn't within a year that I got into cave diving, got hooked on it. Because yeah. it, was, it was the closest place to go diving from Jacksonville. Pick up Ned DeLoach's <laughs> Guide to Florida, and boom, springs are an hour, hour, hour and a half from where I was living. So started, I got hooked on that, and then I realized that the only way to go cave diving was make your own gear your own stuff. Yeah. yeah, you had to make the reels, you had to make the lights, mm. all that. Wow. So what were your main products in the beginning? We had 13 of them, and six of them were lead weights. <laughs> <laughs> Very <Yeah>. creative. <laughs> a couple of reels, uh, a light, a uh, back plate. Unsatisfied with the current diving equipment available, the two pioneered products unheard of at the time, but which have now become commonplace in scuba diving. We actually uh, brought to uh, the market the first uh, commercially available uh, aluminum back plate. Cool. We made them in Bramford at, uh, in 1982. But we only sold like 50 of them the whole time I was there. Yeah. And it was one of our products we launched in 84. And that's what revolutionized all the tech that I uh, was bringing out of backflip. Since their original line of 13 products, Dive Right has grown to offer over 300. When I first met Lamar, Dive Right was only about a year and a half old. So his main concentration at that time was Dive Right, teaching, and cave diving exploration. We I taught her how to dive, and uh, she got into cave diving for a bit. And then after our son was born, she told me there needed to be one sane person in the family. <laughs> so she quit cave diving. Yeah, one and, of us has to live. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but she's always enjoyed open water diving and such, and she loves it. But this right here, it gave her something extra. Yeah. She's very passionate about this because it's, she's doing more than just going diving. So she's really you know, involved in it. And, and I love the fact that she, you know, has found something like that to, uh, yeah, to, to get hold of. When Leanne took a trip to the island of Bonaire in the Caribbean Sea and experienced firsthand the work of CRF, the fate of both organizations, their families, and the reef would be changed for good. When I first heard about CRF, we were in Bonaire. We go to Bonaire um, once a year uh, to do an event with Buddy Dive. And the staff there was just so excited about this new project and the nursery and talking about it. So um, 
I went out to just check it out, swam up to it several times the year before last, and then last year when we were there, um, you know, I expressed my interest in it, and Francesca, who works with the uh, CRF uh, in Bonaire, offered to let me go play with her in the nursery one morning. And we went out and hung coral, and I was hooked. Later that year, Patty and Leanne became instant friends when they met at a trade show. And Patty's contagious passion for reef restoration was passed on, as it had already been many times before. You just can't tell Patty no. Plus, I already had this interest, you know, from the relationship in Bonaire. So I was so excited to meet the U.S. side of the organization and, um, and meeting Patty with her passion and enthusiasm uh, was just overwhelming. You just, you know, if you weren't already hooked, just her enthusiasm just sucked you in. And then, you know, she offered to bring Ken, the king of coral, over to meet me. And here comes this big, tall guy that's so gentle and just doesn't look like the king of coral other than he's just, you know, very quiet. And, yeah, they're just, they're such a great organization with what they're doing to, you know, how can you not want to be a part of it? When Patty and Pam from the Coral Restoration Foundation came up to see us in Dive Right, we kind of, um, felt them out and see what their needs were. And they have a team, you know, of divers down here. They have very specific needs, you know, being able to carry a tool bag, the amount of lift they need for carrying those big, heavy um, coral buckets with them, carrying those bags of hammers that they need and, and epoxy and stuff. And they also have, you know, they need to be free while they're working and be able to reach and grab and not have anything restricting them. So as we sat down and started talking to them, we kind of build the pack, built the package that we thought would work best for them. Again, that excitement, you know, just kept building more and more, and it, then, you know, you want to, let's, gosh, let's do something that's going to be so unique just for them. So that's when we came up with the idea of, of actually branding the product with their uh, coral O so, and their blue color on the wings so that it would stand out and people would know not only that we're supporting it and, and hopefully enticing them to support the organization but just to make them you know stand out and, and be special. Not only would Dive Right's customized equipment uniquely suit CRF's need, Leanne's commitment to the cause would help spread CRF's message throughout the diving community. But mainly, it's not about what we're doing. It's about it's all about them and, and the great mission that they've got. I hope we can challenge other companies, other people, to embrace what CRF is doing, and to like again go out, be a volunteer, and and help them complete their mission. If the recreational dive community doesn't help us, whether by diving with us, supporting us being responsible in their own diving techniques, we're not gonna be successful. So we need them to participate with us. So we're happy to, to teach people to do what it is we do and empower them to be part of the, the solution. Coral restoration is as much a grassroots movement as any other, relying on passionate individuals to build up from the ground, literally. That's exciting yeah. too, I wanna find more of those yeah. people on every island and get them going. And I think every dive shop on every island has at least one of those people in it. And oh, I yeah. Try to reach them. You know, we're not, we're not trying to make money on it. We're trying to get people out there doing it. My vision is to restore coral reefs. Not, you know, I'm never going to get rich, but uh, I think I'm going to see something happen that you know, nobody ever even imagined. Yeah. And, and you know, the dive community is going to be the ones that are going to do it. It's not going to be anybody else. Right, you know? yeah. There's, <laughs> it's going to be divers down yeah, there working. We get a lot of people asking, oh, you know, we'd really like to help, uh, but we don't dive. And, oh, you know, we're trying to find ways to get them involved, too. Well, Ken's goal right now is to be in 25 locations in five years. The outcry and the requests came from everywhere, the Philippines, Africa. But if we can develop the resources to reach out to these other countries and give them the tools they need to do what, what we're doing themselves, that's not going to be our success. To continue to grow, CRF needs donations. But even more important are the hands willing to submerge into the cause.
and plant the coral that will continue to sustain the ecosystem around it for decades and decades to come. One of the big public outreaches that we have is our, is our dive program. So we take recreational divers and we spend a day with them. We teach them the hands-on. We, we give them the educational basis why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and why what we do is important. And then we take them underwater. Come and do this with us. Put your hands on it. And it's really important for everybody to understand, regardless of where they live, what they do at home impacts our reefs. So yeah, I, I think of the ocean as a piece of art. For me, the ocean is my Monet. And I can't imagine why anybody would ever consider destroying a, a Monet. It's, it's a thing of beauty. With working with the Coral Restoration Foundation, it's a way to help. It's a way to maybe restore some of that you know, reef that even I remember being different than what it is now, just in my short period of time diving. So it's easy to become passionate you know, with Leanne. And of course, that's everybody at the Coral Restoration Foundation. If you sit down with anybody from the CRF, for more than 10 minutes, they their love for coral is just contagious. And I think that's how Leanne got you know, so passionate about in the first place, is working with a couple of them, it is contagious. As we've seen, passion can be contagious. One day you're unaware of a cause and that it's with you for life. But as much as it can motivate an individual, its ability to bond people together is even more astounding. Dive right in the CRF are very similar in our mission um, in life as a company, as a foundation, which is we're very passionate about diving, we're very passionate about what we do. You know, Dive Right is very passionate about you know, creating the best gear we can for divers, you know, because we are divers. Coral Restoration Foundation, they're very passionate about restoring the coral you know, not because they just, oh, the, let's go restore coral, it's because they're all divers. They've all seen the change and they love the coral reefs and they want to see them healthier. So I think it's a you know, very, very fitting parallel in our companies that just because of all the passion that we have for what we do. The future of the Florida reefs are still uncertain, but you can count on two organizations to do everything in their power to change that. If you do any research on the CRF, that's all that shows through is their concern about the ocean, restoring it, you know, what they're doing, and, and you're hooked. I mean, you just, you can't not want to be a part of that. Our passion is the same. I mean, what we do is, yeah, we build gear, but we build it because we're passionate about diving. We're passionate about making sure people have good quality equipment to do the job that they want to do, whether it be a recreational diver, a technical diver, going and hanging coral on a tree. It's all important, and them having proper equipment is important to us. Everywhere we go, there's you, you meet into different you know, people's different perceptions of what can and can't be done, but once you show them that it can be done just about anywhere, yeah. and it's simple, and, uh, and people buy into it and you saw how simple it was and you think oh you're not allowed to touch a coral it'll kill it it's like we're hacking them up with <laughs> <laughs> diagonal cutters and <laughs> yeah. hammers and stuff you know it, you know they are pretty tough yeah yeah i mean it was like just epoxying them for a while um i think the most fun for me was this week lamar and ken actually meeting and i think the two of them found out that they were much more alike than they ever realized because i don't think Ken, as, an, a, as a coral restorer and a fish collector, would have thought he'd had one thing in common with the cave diver. Cave diver. Mm -hmm. To discover more about the Coral Restoration Foundation's global mission, 
visit CoralRestoration.org or call 305-453-7030. To learn more about DiveRight, go to DiveRight.com or call 1-800-495-1046.